cue ball eyes view of a snooker table. Says with me once again, good afternoon, and welcome here to the 1983 Embassy World Professional Snooker Championship, and we're into the last five days. The two semi-finals, and of course the final, which is played here on Sunday and Monday. And this afternoon, the first semi-final we were watching, Alex Higgins versus Steve Davis. And at this moment, down in the crucible, while they're all getting ready, everything's been brushed and dusted, and in fact, the very lucky 948 people who have got the 948 seats will be shortly moving in. The match uh, begins here, as I say, <clears throat> a little later this afternoon, and now just one table dominating this great home of world snooker. Semi-finals and final to be played there, and the semi-finals over the best of 31 frames. They're split into four sessions. The first man to reach 16 goes into the final. So this afternoon, then, Alex Higgins playing Steve Davis. Now, they've met on two previous occasions in the World Championship. It was in uh, 1980. They met in the quarterfinal when Higgins won 39 and, of course, went on to the final to lose out to Cliff Thorburn. And then they met again in 1981, the second round, when Steve Davis won 13-8 and went on to take his title. We all know, of course, that uh, champions have got uh, a bad record here at the Crucible when they try and come back. Nobody's ever won twice, and in fact, uh, Alex Higgins just equaled the best ever record. That's of Cliff Thorburns, who reached the semi-final after his championship year. So will Higgins go on and break the hoodoo? Well, all that will be spelt out over the next five days. Well, what about the other semi-final and the one that begins tonight? Well, uh, that one, if you were with us last night, rested on the last quarter-final, that tremendous battle going on between the two Canadians, Cliff Thorburn and Kirk Stevens. And if you were with us, you'll know that uh, at a quarter past midnight, Kirk Stevens had gone ahead 12 frames to 11, needing just one more. Well, the match went on, and this is what happened in frame 24. Cliff Thorburn at the table, leading 49 to 29. Clive Everton and Jim Meadowcroft are commentating. And that contact with the jaw of the middle pocket could lead to Thorburn going out of this championship. Well, that one, Clive, actually went down the hole and then came back up. Kirk Stevens just can't believe that shot. Yes, Jim, just, just, just touched the jewel of the middle pocket, almost disappeared. And the significance of that in off is that Thorburn now needs to pot only the yellow to leave Stevens needing a snooker. Plenty of tension getting to Thorburn.
That was a slightly more difficult chance than the last one. Thorburn playing a perfectly judged snooker, but a yellow ball heading towards the middle pocket. Almost Five. ironic that Stevens's yellow stayed out, but Cliff Thorburn's went in. What a time to have a fluke. It's assured him of 12 frames all. later Cliff Thorburn got the extra points he needed there the frame over of course 12 all and it was now eight minutes past one in the morning Thorburn doing one of his famous grinding clawbacks here's frame 25 he's behind here 22 to 28 Stevens was only 12 years of age when he first challenged Thorburn. He saved up four dollars and uh, Thorburn gave him 50 start. But we're a long past those days now. shot that was Clive. Uh, Kirk Stevens deserves everything that he's going to get from it. Jesus. Extremely disappointed there not to screw the cue ball back for another red. That was a very venturesome attempt at a plant at this stage. Although Stevens throughout this match has uh, generally been the more positive in his choice of shot.
Looks to me as if Thorben is snookered on all reds. <coughs> With a deficit of 13 points, Thorburn well aware that to concede Stevens an opening here could lead to him going out of the championship. Was that a smile of relief? I would think so, Clive. It was a good uh, hit on the red, but uh, rather fortunate to cover the one just by the blue ball. result of 35 minutes play in this deciding frame. This is already the uh, second latest finished ever at the Crucible. We've just overtaken Terry Griffiths' epic 1979 semi-final win over Eddie Charlton. Positive choice of shot by Stevens. The pot preferred to the certainty of uh, leaving the cue ball tight on the bottom cushion with the safety shot.
seven. into the lead with that pink but uh, there's no speedy conclusion likely in this frame Fifteen. having to uh, concentrate mainly on the pot there the red ball being almost tight on the cushion and almost straight with the white. Couldn't do a lot of uh, position and play with it. Natural angle here for him to run into Bork for the uh, stray red up there. now Stevens has been within one frame of a place in the semi-final and it may yet elude him that there's a possibility that he can both pop the pink ball here and run through and disturb the remaining two reds on the side cushion. Sixteen points in front and every pot is a pint of blood for both players at this stage. Will Forbin attempted to play dead strength on the red ball, hoping to keep the white very tight to the side cushion, but uh, got himself in a little bit of trouble here. Inconceivable that Thorben would attempt the pot with the long spider. Um. 
Well, it's difficult to see, Clive, just how much uh, of the white ball he can actually strike, which will certainly limit his manoeuvrability. Well, there must be ice in his veins to do that. 38. Stevens knows that Thorburn needs to pot only this simple black to leave him needing a snooker. And that 45 break was superior in quality. Jack Stevens, 35, Cliff Thorburn, and certainly in terms of the pressure that is involved to many, many a century. Stevens needing two four-point snookers to win. One five-point snooker to draw. And I'm full of admiration for both players for the match that they've produced. We've seen so many here at the Crucible. And uh, this has been one to rank with the finest. Thorburn will be anxious not only to avoid leaving Stevens a free ball, should he fail to make good his escape from this snooker, he will also not want to leave the cue ball situated in such a position that Stevens could easily leave him a second snooker. Well, certainly a long way away from uh, making good his escape. But uh, it was a very awkward snooker. There was a case, even at this stage, for referee John Street to uh, replace the cue ball, not because it could conceivably have been a deliberate foul, but because the escape might not have met quite the standards when expected from a leading professional.
in any event. Stevens has extracted one set of the penalty four penalty points he needs. Not a bad opportunity for Stevens to lay a second snooker here, or at least a, a second snooker from which he could profit. Yes, Clive, he uh, has in effect uh, four balls which he can uh, snooker behind. Either the yellow ball to go behind the brown and green. And a few minutes later, just before a quarter past two in the morning, it was all over. As it is, the Cliff Corburn Grinding Company is still in business. Its proprietor has beaten his fellow Canadian Kurt Stevens 13 frames to 12 after a most memorable and dramatic match here at the Crucible. With a moment of Canadian emotion there, Cliff Thorburn, who really has helped to produce Kurt Stevens in his snooker career, walking off the winner. 13 frames to 12, Stevens looks for another year. Well, a marvellous match that was, as I said, finishing this morning here just before a quarter past 12. Well, of course, Cliff Thorburn... In